Hello, this is Charles Herring, Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder at Witfu. Let's take a look at Witfu Precinct and how the interface works. So we're looking at the Witfu Investigate tab uh, in a given incident. Uh, this incident is uh, has an automatic name of Outstanding Gorilla, which is automatically generated. It is of the type uh, Data Theft. This is its unique identifier of when it was first observed, when it was last observed, and its suspicion score. And suspicions from 0 to 1, where 0 would be absolute certainty of uh, benign behavior, and 1 would be certainty of nefarious behavior. A uh, simple uh, summary here tells us that uh, someone was attempting to steal data that began uh, at 8.31 p.m. on Monday, um, and it had a suspicion of 0.96. There are 25 leads uh, that were generated uh, uh, around this thing, some of them from Carbon Black, others from Stealth Watch, uh, in this mix, different types of alarms. Uh, the colors on the link board represent the different uh, behavior sets, so exploitative behavior, botnet, uh, data staging. Uh, at a high level, what we're looking at uh, is the progression from left to right uh, of the attack, that uh, this machine here, Workstation 01, uh, had uh, some malware dropped on it, that credentials were used of John Doe at Acme.com here, that some machines were scanned. This machine, this Workstation 03, was scanned, and also uh, the John Doe credentials were used. Uh, data moved from the data center to this host. Then it moved to the DMZ before moving out of the network to this dropbox.cn host. So uh, in the different color triggers of the different stages, so the yellow here is exploit, and then the black here represents botnet, so there's a command and control channel here, as well as here to the same C2 command and control server. Um, orange is the data staging, so data coming here to here, and then eventually leaving the DMZ here. So, um, on the analysis piece of, of Precinct, uh, we look at observations. So the sizes of each one of these hosts represents its suspicion score. So each node has a suspicion. This one has a score of 0.96. It's also on the WITFU Global Indicator of Compromise feed. And so 10 of our uh, 10 customer incidents have been submitted uh, to WITFU. Um, indicating exploitative and ex, uh, exfiltration behaviors. Um, our customers detected it using Carbon Black and Stealth Watch. Uh, this host is geographically located in China. The things that we've observed about this host is that it has multiple bad behaviors, both red and yellow, or exfiltration and exploitative behavior, because it dropped this piece of malware on this host. Um, it has severity code that's low, which uh, according to the RFCs is a reason to be more suspicious. It has multiple relationships. It has a relationship with this infected host, with this piece of malware, it has a relationship with this particular user. And then more than a gigabyte of data was transferred here, which was represented by this thick line of data going here. And we can also look at the connections and see uh, six terabytes of, of data going across the web connection. So those are the things uh, that we note about that external host. We can also look at uh, the hosts that are uh, internal here, and we can take uh, we can take actions on them. So let me click this guy here. There we go. And I can quarantine it, reach out to NAC. And once the response comes back, we'll say it was successful. And then we can ask IT to wipe the machine by executing uh, a connection to ServiceNow to open up a new ticket. Right. We can also do the same thing for resetting this user's password. If this might not work, because no, it didn't work because that user doesn't exist inside of that. So the end of the investigation is moving uh, the status. So convicted means someone tried to steal data and it succeeded, which is true in this case. Acquitted means this wasn't data theft, this was a false positive, this was 
uh, maybe a backup or data moving across the data center. Cold case occurs automatically when the uh, evidence stops coming in about this uh, given incident and um, uh, there hasn't been new evidence in 10 days by default. And disrupted means uh, someone tried to steal data, but uh, something stopped it, a firewall stopped it, or something along those lines. Um, we can look at the individual leads themselves. This has the forensic artifact, which we'll talk about artifacts here in a second, on what message was received, what was, ex uh, what was extracted. So you can look at all of the information the raw information around how we were able to uh, draw this out. Um, I'm going to close this out as convicted, and then that's going to generate uh, some metrics back in. So uh, that's uh, how we interact with an incident. It's figuring out what happened, what the disposition was, uh, interacting with the architecture to um, white machines, update users, uh, passwords, those kind of things, so that we can quickly respond to these issues. Uh, this is a list of incidents. Uh, an incident above 0.75 is going to be in red, um, which means it has a high suspicion and you should be able to investigate it. Um, it's going to have an auto-generated name, its status, the MO, suspicion, how many attacking nodes, how many target nodes, uh, if there's malware, people involved. Um, you can also filter on different MOs, so instead of just looking data theft, new, we'll look at Fishing. So this is a phishing campaign with some different users, a piece of email, different targets. Uh, again, same same workflow uh, with integration of standardized data coming in. If we want to look at raw data, uh, Wifu precincts built uh, to allow for that. So if we just want to say, show me everything from proof point protect, we just automatically build that without needing to understand the sources because uh, WITFU uh, does. So we can quickly search the data, look at uh, the raw message that came up. We can visualize the relationships of the search results. Just going to change this way out there so it's not going to be messy. And we can see how these things and the search results are related to each other. We can look for a distribution of different uh, bytes and the, those types of things. We can save these searches, download the results, uh, and then reopen them later on if we'd like. Uniquely, WITFU is able to generate reports. Um, as our customers deploy WITFU Precinct, the first thing um, that we encourage them to do is make sure that you have all of the right tools plugged in. We integrate with the Center for in Internet Security Security Controls to understand uh, what controls you have in place. So some of the controls are here, and then how many, what percentage of your computers or uh, nodes are being protected by these giving, giving controls. We also can look at how they map to ISO, NIST, and PCI frameworks. Once you look at uh, having those tools in place, you want to evaluate are they configured correctly. So a likely true positive incident is an incident with a suspicion above 0.5. A true positive incident is one that's confirmed as convicted, as we did a minute ago. Likely false positive is an incident below 0.5 in suspicion. And false positive is a human confirmed false positive by flag of incidents as acquitted. Well, from these metrics, we're able to derive some pretty cool business things, like a stealth watch is generating too many false positives, and the labor cost is $40,000 per month in FTE labor costs. Blue represents how much money could be saved if we went from a block only to, uh, to excuse me, from a detect only to a detect and block. And green is how much is actually being blocked. And so what you want to see on every tool is really just an all green indication. You want to move to where tools are just detecting things to where the architecture is detecting it and blocking it, which would result in uh, this red line or these, uh, these high suspicion percentages being close to 100. But you know, as you can notice here in the funnel, that of our 1,700 incidents that have been generated in the last 31 days, um, most of them weren't blocked. That we're detecting things that are flowing through that are not disrupted, and they were uh, they were likely true positives. They have high suspicion, but we're not blocking them. 
Well, what that means to the security practices, you're gonna have to spend a lot of human labor to deal with that. We also look at tool gap overlap. Um, you wanna see this is a very healthy distribution of tools providing a value that other tools aren't able to provide, or as we have here, complete separation with, with no overlap on our confirmed incidents. Once we've uh, br uh, brought in the right tools, configured them correctly, then you can start looking at the human impact. But in this deployment where we're not doing a lot of blocking, where we're detecting a lot of things that we're not automatically blocking, we need to staff 26 full-time employees where we only have half of a FTE allocated. And that guy's working around the clock and still can't keep up. As a matter of fact, he's only getting about 10% of his work done. So we need to spend 4,500 man hours. We either hire those people or fix the security architecture. Again, by we want to drive this disrupted percentage very close to 100% so that 100 things happen, 100 things are blocked. That's a healthy diagnostic approach to uh, security operations. Uh, with you also generates the width readiness score, which is a score from zero to five that shows how uh, secure an organization is. The first two points are uh, from the critical security controls. Do you have the right controls in place? Another point comes from uh, proper patch management. The next one, are, it, it, the next point is from um, effective uh, blocking. Are you disrupting the incidents or blocking the incidents that should be blocked? And then are you completing the work? So this given organization is only getting 24% of the work done, which is uh, resulting in a really low uh, readiness score. So we want to improve the, num the number of controls that we have in place, the patch management, the configuration of the controls to block attacks, and then we're getting the uh, right work done. Um, healthy deployments that have readiness scores above 3.0 will notice that this funnel is very small at the end. Most with two customers that have gone through the process of deploying the correct controls uh, and configuring them correctly uh, have nearly zero incidents to investigate each month. And it's a, uh, the idea is diagnostic, proactive uh, work is better than uh, responding fast. So make a healthy network so you don't have to make a healthy security practice so you don't have to continually put out fires. It's better to fire proof than to be fast at fires. So that's been uh, an over quick overview of the Whip Food product. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to visit uh, the Whip Food community at community.whipfood.com. And this has been Charles Heron, Chief Technology Officer.